Welcome to the Chem Doctor, and what I'd like to do in this presentation is cover how to find the pH of a weak acid solution in the presence of a common ion. All right, so what am I talking about here? If we look at uh, the equilibrium uh, weak acid reaction, uh, and in this case I'm going to pick on acetic acid because it's the classic model for that's used in general chemistry and in, in advanced placement chemistry and so on. And if we look at uh, the, the acid ionization equation for that particular acid, we can write the equation this way, where we have acetic acid plus water, and then that is going to be in equilibrium with hydronium ion and uh, the acetate um, ion. Now, the equilibrium constant for this reaction, the Ka, is actually equal to 1.8 uh, times 10 to the minus uh, fifth. Now, uh, what do we mean by a common ion uh, in an equilibrium problem? All right, so we have an equilibrium situation here, and on the reactant side, we have both the acetic acid and, and water that's involved in the equilibrium. Now, water is not included in the equilibrium constant because essentially, I think the easiest explanation that I want to make for this is that the concentration of water is, is constant throughout this reaction because of the sheer size of it around 55 molar. So what that means is that, uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and underline the species here that are involved in the equilibrium that are tied together intimately in the free energy of uh, this reaction. So we have the acetic acid molecule, the hydronium, and the acetate. So if you remember back to the principles uh, that we covered in equilibrium, mainly Le Chatelier's principle, these three components that I underlined are involved in the equilibrium of this reaction. And if we manipulate the concentration of any of the three of these things, that's going to cause the, uh, the reaction to shift uh, either to the right or to the left to reachieve equilibrium. So if we initiate a, a reaction with any two of these, that's going to have an effect on which way the reaction uh, shifts. And ultimately, it's going to influence how we uh, make, the cal make calculations regarding trying to define or determine the equilibrium concentration of any of the one of, of the three of these. So let's go ahead and look at a problem where we set up initial concentration. So I'm going to write a before over here. So we set up an initial reaction where we take a beaker, we put some water in it, and we're going to add enough of two of these components uh, to define initial concentrations. And what we're going to use in terms of the uh, acetic acid will be uh, 0.1 molar. So we'll add enough acetic acid to, to this uh, um, volume of water to make a, a solution that's going to be 0.1 molar in its final concentration. And then we're also going to add some acetate. And the amount of acetate that we're going to add will be about 0 .0, enough to make a solution that's going to be 0.01 molar. And initially there will not be any H3O plus. Now remembering back to the Chalet principle, since we're not adding one of these products the reaction has to shift to the right in order to produce some of this. So the shift is going to be to the right, and we're going to show that shift by going ahead and subtracting x in the classic way that we normally solve a weak acid problem. The, the hydronium is going to be x, and then our acetate will be 0 0.01 plus x. When we go ahead now we're going to go ahead and set up the equilibrium expression, all right, which, which classically, all right, now I'm going to write this without any numbers in it first, all right, so classically this is going to equal the H3O plus times the acetate molecule divided by the, the concentration of uh, the acetic acid. Now, when we plug in from the ICE table, all right, I'm going to go ahead and write my constant here first. And then in the numerator, we're going to have our x for the hydronium. We're going to have the 0 
1 plus x for the acetate. And then we're going to have the 0 0.1 minus x for the acetic acid. Now you need to remember that we're dealing here with a, a small equilibrium constant at 10 to the minus fifth. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to neglect the x out of the sums so that we can avoid using the quadratic equation. Uh, we're making the assumption that the equilibrium constant is small enough that the shift that we get to the right is also small enough so that the amount of x that we're going to subtract from our initial concentrations will be a small enough value that, that it's an insignificant change. Um, to, to confirm that it's okay to do this, we're, we're going to um, also make a calculation uh, to uh, make sure that the 5% rule is valid, which is also our percent dissociation. So let's go ahead and, and uh, run the calculation. When, when we solve for our x, what we're going to get is that x is going to be equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus fourth molar for the hydronium. All right, now, before I do anything else with this, I want to calculate the pH. I want to make sure that the assumption that we made is going to be right, so I'm going to run our 5% rule, which is also the percent dissociation for this. All right, and that's going to equal 1.8 times 10 to the minus fourth, and I'm going to divide it by the smaller amount here, uh, our smaller initial amount, to be certain that we that we don't violate the rule off of the acetate. So it's going to be 0 0.01. We're going to divide the 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 by the, one, uh, by the 0.01. And uh, what we're going to get for that, got to make a quick calculation here. So it's going to be 1.8 uh, 10 to the minus 4th divided by the 0.01. and we get 1.8%. So we're well within the 5% rule calculated for this guy right here. Now the percent dissociation for the actual acid is going to be the same value, 1.8 times 10 to the minus fourth uh, divided by 0 0.1, which is the initial concentration of the actual acid times 100. And uh, what we're going to get here uh, when we run this calculation, and I just want to make sure that what I jotted here um, before I did the video was actually correct. Yes, is 0.18%. So uh, our assumption was valid in both cases in terms of the initial concentrations of the acid and of the common ion. This is the common, maybe I should make sure to label that. So this is common ion right here. Um, it is a product that is involved in the equilibrium that was present initially in the reaction along with a reactant that's also part of the equilibrium. Now let's go ahead and get the pH done. So the pH of this solution uh, will be minus the log concentration of the hydronium, uh, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fourth. All right, so the pH for this solution uh, is 3.74. Now, before I close the video, what I want to do very quickly is calculate the pH of this solution and the percent dissociation if the common ion had not been present. All right, now we're going to do this quickly. So over here on the right, I'm going to rewrite my acid ionization using shorthand no notation, where A minus is my acetate, HA is my uh, acetic acid molecule. We have 0 0.1 molar of that solution. In this example, in this example there's no common ion, so initially there's going to be zero of this, zero of the hydronium, and zero of the A minus. At equilibrium, we're going to shift to the right to produce the products. 
So we're going to have an equilibrium expression that's going to be x squared over 0.1 molar, and that's equal to our equilibrium constant, 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. My x value will equal the square root of 0.1 times 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. So my x value Let me just be really clear about this, fix that little glitch. So my x value is going to equal 0 0.00134 molar uh, concentration hydronium. All right, now the percent dissociation here, which is important, is going to equal that concentration so 0 0.00134 over 0 0.1 times 100. All right, and so my percent dis is going to equal 1.34%. And very quickly, the pH of this solution uh, is going to be equal to 2.87. And I'm going to let the viewer you know, run the calculation on that. It'll be minus the log of 0 0.00134. Now, why did I do this? Because I want to point out to you that in the presence of a common ion, that, that the equilibrium shift to the right is depressed by Le Chatelier's principle. And you can see that here in two ways. If you compare the percent dissociation that we see for this acid using the same initial concentration that we used here for the common ion problem, but in the absence of it, right, there's no A minus in this reaction to start with. You can see the percent dissociation is 1.34%. Whereas for this problem over here where we had the presence of the common ion, the percent dissociation is correspondingly depressed. Second, secondly, if you compare the pH, the pH of the solution in the absence of the common ion with the same initial concentration that we used in the common ion problem, the pH is uh, 2.87 for a 0.1 molar solution of acetic acid. If you look at the pH of the solution with the common ion, you can see that it was significantly higher. The reason for that is because uh, in the presence of a product in an equilibrium reaction where you have initial reactants, the shift to the right to achieve uh, equilibrium will be less than it would be otherwise in the absence of the common ion. All right. Now with that, I would like to go ahead and close the video. I want to thank the viewer for, for coming to Chem Doctor and watching the presentation. I really appreciate it. And there, you can find more videos at www.chemdoctor.org.